Let's talk about physics. Yes, from cosmology and the universe to the quantum world of atoms and molecules. From Newton to Einstein with a lot of curiosity. Hello, I am Anya. Welcome to our show. Let's talk about physics. Hello, I am Matteo. Welcome to our show. Let's talk about physics. Let's talk today, in the first episode of this series, about the Newton's low and classical particles. In our times, high school students dive into Newton's laws. They learn to calculate projectile trajectories using these laws. A bit of physics reveals the parabolic path of a projectile's center of mass. The projectile is real, but its center of mass is an abstract point for calculations. Newton's laws form the foundation of classical mechanics. A classical particle's movement is described by classical mechanics knowledge. Anya, I agree with you. For three centuries, soldiers have mastered the art of predicting where projectiles will land. Using the timeless laws of classical mechanics, they calculate trajectories with precision. Today, the same principles guide the paths of modern rockets. Newton's laws, solid, tested, and undeniably correct. However, dear Matteo, we know today that if the masses of the classical particles are too large and gravitation is too strong, Newton's laws fail. More than a century ago, Albert Einstein discovered the general theory of relativity. This groundbreaking theory redefined our understanding of gravity and the universe. While Newton's laws are still useful, they are only approximately correct. Einstein's theory provides a more accurate description of how gravity works. It explains phenomena that Newton's laws couldn't, like the bending of light around massive objects. Yeah, you know a lot. Let's summarize our discussion today. Newton's laws are the backbone of classical mechanics. A projectile is a real classical particle, but its center of mass is an abstract point with mass for calculations. Newton's laws are solid, tested, and correct for calculating trajectories of projectiles, rockets, and macroscopic objects. However, for maximum precision in cosmological movements, we turn to Einstein's general theory of relativity. Well, Matteo, still you are not completely correct. In these extreme cases, we should use a quantum general theory of relativity. Wait, Anya. No so fast. We will talk about this stuff in future episodes of this series. This is enough for today. Ciao, Anya. I love you and we love our audience. See you in the next episode.